नमस्ते वेलकम टू ग्लोबल गीता ग्रुप आई एम सत्या कालरा यूर होस्ट फॉर दिस सेशन गीता मेड सिंपल एंड द फाउंडर ऑफ पाथ टू आनंद आई एम सो ग्लैड दैट आई गेट अगेन दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू शेयर वॉट इज गीता वाय गीता द पर्पज ऑफ दिस ग्रुप और द गोल ऑफ दिस ग्रुप इज टू लर्न हाउ टू अवेकन यूर सेल्फ हाउ टू एक्सपीरियंस लव पीस एंड आनंदम दैट पीस विद इन आवर सेल्फ लव विद इन आवर सेल्फ and awaken our self who we are what is the purpose of our life and how to attain that purpose that's what gita is all about in last week session in our introduction session we spoke about what is gita though we spoke very glimpse of what is gita because we can't even explain what is gita and why gita what does gita do for us because every day gita showers us blesses us the blessing of god once we start studying the secret key to blessing opens all the doors for us so i call gita is a secret key to our life and in last session as i said we just put a some glimpse of what is bhagavad gita and today we are going to speak about is gita for me who is this gita for and also when to study gita where to study gita and of course why to study gita so i will start with where to start where to study gita actually there is no place any place you can sit you can sit by the windows you can sit on your bed you can sit in the office at home doesn't matter you just have those feeling and then question comes when to study bhagavad gita many people ask me that and again i said there is no time any time you feel like studying and also of course any time we feel lonely we feel depressed and when we feel that we are not up to our happiest moment and we want to experience that happiest moment then gita is for that time so there is no time limit for bhagavad gita any time anywhere just sit and study but again my favorite time here are two times of the day first thing in the morning when i get up i study maybe in a, even in one verse one word whatever it is and before going to bed i always just take one question and then try to answer through the teachings of bhagavad gita that's why i said this these teachings are mainly from this book my question and god's answers which i which is a best seller on amazon available on amazon and which has been being used and 
was used in many universities like for example UC Berkeley in the course of ethics undergraduate class Dominican University so many universities have used this book and continue to keep in their libraries so i will just just give a small glimpse of what we spoke last week or recap from last week that gita is a step by step instruction manual to answer every question of our life or take us to solve any problem in our life so it is a step by step instruction manual to help us to live righteously in this world and experience our eternal happiness sat jit ananda then the question comes is gita for me do i have to be hindu to practice gita or study gita actually in bhagavad gita there is no name of hinduism it all speaks about humanity and it was given to one individual arjuna who was the dearest friend of lord krishna in the battle field not in the temples not in the ashrams not in himalayas not in the secluded areas but is the most difficult place one could imagine the place where the big war was going to take place actually i would like to give you a little story about bhagavad gita that bhagavad gita is a part of indian scripture mahabharata chapter 23 to 40 and actually the scripture mahabharata is about two f- families or two brothers where the family feud started on the kingdom who and two brothers brother dhritarashtra who happened to be blind from birth and had 100 wicked sons and they are known as korvas and another brother the pious brother pandavas who had five sons so even though he pandava was a younger brother he became the king because the older brother dhritarashtra was blind and dhritarashtra could not absorb that he was very resentful very pity about his own situation of his blindness and he always resented his brother pandavas so when they had the children like pandavas eldest son was the the trust uh, i'm sorry the yudhishthir and dhritarashtra eldest son was duryodhana they kind of had the similar qualities and duryodhana inherited that resentment by absorb by absorbing his father's feelings or from the environment and he become very resentful and he was very jealous about his cousins five cousins who happened to be the very pious the sons of pandavas 
So he tried to get all the kingdom or he snatched all the kingdom from them by all the dishonest means. However, with God's grace, he never succeeded for a long time, but for a short time he did succeed. And But he promised them that he will give them their kingdom back after they go to the forest for 12 years and must not be seen by anybody. And when they come back, after fulfilling his Duryodhana's requirement for living in forest for 12 years, then Duryodhana will return their kingdom. And when they came back, you can guess this greedy man, corrupted man, decided not to give them. And he said, I will not give them even a tip of the needle land. So, Lord Krishna, which at that time, nobody knew he was Lord Krishna. He was just a Krishna. So Krishna and elderly in the family, all the wise people advised him, Duryodhana to behave and return their kingdom or give them little land so they can survive. But he decided not to do that. So, in order to do that, in order to get their part of the property back, they were advised that they have to fight. And Duryodhana did tell them that he will return the kingdom if they win the kingdom by fighting or having a war. So the war was imminent. They both went to Lord Krishna for help. And Lord Krishna said, I, can, I have two things. One is myself and another one is my vast army. So, of course, Duryodhana chose the vast army. And Arjuna was so happy that his friend Krishna was on his side. So he just chose only one person, his friend Krishna, and made him or requested him to be a charioteer of his Rath. And War was about to begin and Arjuna decided to inspect and evaluate the whole field, the Kurukshetra where the war was taking place. So the battlefield of Kurukshetra, he wanted to just go around and see who he's going to fight. And when he looked at his elderly, his gurus, his respected grandfathers, family members, he totally freaked out because he realized that by going through this war, there will be many casualties. And he might be participating, he is going to participate and that means he's going to incur sin, kill people. And then he says, just for kingdom, just for a land, just for the property, I'm going to get involved in this war. And he got very nervous. And he went back on the charioter, his chariot, and he told Krishna, No, for kingdom, for worldly things, I am not going to fight for this war. 
And now here is the biggest question which many people ask. He did not want to commit any sin. He did not want to be part of this non-violence or this violence because he was practicing non-violence. However, he has been a warrior, the righteous warrior. We call it dharma. He was fulfilling his dharma all of his life that there were any misbehavior or injustice in anywhere. He was the one who would go and establish the righteousness, whatever was needed. But here when he saw his family members, he lost his righteous wisdom or his wisdom to differentiate what is right and what is wrong for him. So he says he wants to run away from the war. He wants to go to Himalayas just to do meditation and not to get involved with this. And Lord Krishna said, here this is where the Lord Krishna starts preaching him, educating him that whole Gita is about. So here Arjuna says, I will not fight this battle. And it beautifully it says in Bhagavad Gita, Na Jyotasya Iti Gobinda. It means Gobin, Krishna, I, will, I do not want to get involved with this war. I'm not going to fight. But once Lord Krishna takes him, uplifts him, little by little, He gets transformed and at the end he says Karishe Vachnam Tau I will do as you advise because he understood that by now that this war is not just for kingdom it is for establishing the righteousness where women feel safe where children feel safe, elderly feel safe. And they are not the victimized by Korvas and Duryodhana's army and snatching the properties from others. It was totally a chaos. And he had to establish the righteousness which means he had to create the environment where the righteousness was dharma which we call it dharma so basically Duryodhana was performing a dharma and this righteous war which is called dharmic war dharmic battle had to be performed by Pandavas, by Arjuna. So Arjuna's after removing his doubts, getting out of confusion, what is right, what is wrong, he clearly saw the righteousness and he stood up. He got the courage again. to perform the righteous war where he initially sat down on the back of the chariot and he says he cannot even stand up. His body is, sh is shivering. He has lost total wisdom, total power, total courage to even hold his bow and arrow. And now he stood up to perform the righteous war by motivating, by giving the wisdom, by uplifting basically the lower soul of Arjuna to the higher soul with the help of the supreme power, with the grace of the supreme power. So now the question is, is Gita for me? Let me ask all of you a question after listening to this. 
don't we feel that Gita is not only for Arjuna? It was not just given to Arjuna for his causes. Lord Krishna used Arjuna as his symbolism, as a model. Because we all go through these miseries, these challenges, these confusions from morning to evening. Sometimes those challenges and confusions are greater. There we cannot handle. But on the other hand, there are simple confusions we get all the time. So, Bhagavad Gita was not just given only to Arjuna to solve his problems, to remove his confusions, but given to Arjuna at that time for the entire humanity. So whenever the situation comes in our life, we have a guru. Gita is our guru. By studying Gita, it awakens the guru within us. Lord Krishna is always blessing us. So, by studying Gita, it answers our questions. Who are we? I mean, if we live in the worldly, things and get involved, then every day, who am I? I'm a mom. I'm a wife. I'm a social worker and could be employee, could be employer, brother, sister, aunt, you name it. I have many titles and every title of mine is affiliated and associated with my different responsibilities. As a mother, I have to make sure I guide my children, I take good care of my children. As a wife, I must take a good care of my family, my husband, my surroundings. As a social worker, as an employer, as an employee, I have to take care of it. And of course, I have to take care of myself too. So how am I going to do all this? There are so many challenges. And Gita, my question and God's answers, answers every question, who am I? He says, you are all those. Fulfill all those titles with your righteous action by doing your dharma. And we will be speaking about what is my dharma and how can I fulfill. And if you have any question, please, you can type it now or you can send it through my email satyaitpathtoanandam.org or going on our website. And we usually answer those questions. So last time the question came to me and which I'm trying to answer it. Is Gita for me? Do I have to be Hindu to practice Gita? And answer is Gita teaches us how to live righteously as a mother, how to, as a sister, as a social worker, how can I fulfill my responsibilities? How, this is also called Dharma. How can I fulfill my dharma, my prescribed duties? I call them prescribed duties. How could I fulfill them? And then it also tells me, who am I? I am the divine soul. And not just I am the divine soul. Every living being is divine soul. So I have to experience the divinity within myself and also see the divinity in everybody. In other words, I have to see the goodness in myself. Many times what we say, 
we label ourselves, we downgrade ourselves. I'm not good. I'm not intelligent. I, I do not have my good memories. I'm losing my memories. I, we will give, give all those negative connotations to us. And I'm not just a divine soul, but I'm a divine energy. That positive energy. So whatever I, every word I say, negative or positive, that reflects me and if it also, also it affects me. So if I say I am tired and do you do this experiment, that if you say yourself I am tired and then you repeat I am tired and then you repeat I am tired, you know what? Even with first time you say or the second time or third time you say, you are tired. I'm just tired now. But at the same time, if I say, no, I have energy. I have courage. I can do it. Why can't I do it? I'm full of energy because I am a divine energy. I have a highest potential as much as God. Because I'm a part of the God. And I immediately start smiling. I feel courage. I'm not alone. I have supreme power with me. I have the supreme energy which is flowing within me. And when we start feeling that, we are charged up. We are full of energy. So, again, Gita was not just given to Arjuna just for solve his problems but it was given for the whole humanity as, as I said before Mahatma Gandhi said that any time I had difficulty in my life I opened the ancient wisdom of Bhagavad Gita and then immediately I started smiling because the answers are right there. I see the new light, new hope. So anytime we have difficulty, Bhagavad Gita is for us. And thank you very much, Meena ji, Madhu ji, and many others. I I cannot name all of you, but thank you very much for joining me. So Gita, which has the 700 verses, I call these 700 verses, each verse is like a pill, prescription pill for each situation, for each, I wouldn't say disease, but difficulties in life. This is a prescription. These are the formulas. So each word, 24,665 words in Bhagavad Gita are for all of us. They give us the wisdom and Actually, it is 24,447 words. And if you just think about the one word, Gita, just it gives the smile on the face. And then these words, actually Gita has 18 chapters. Each chapter ends with the yoga. It is called yoga, Vishad yoga, Bhakti yoga, all yoga. Yoga means yoga union within ourself. So basically Gita gives us different paths, different ways how to experience that inner peace. Yoga means peace, love within ourself. Experience that unity with divinity and that divinity is I am. That peace, love, Satchit Ananda. So to me, Gita 
even though it is called yog shastra because each chapter at the end it says yog shastra arjun samvad yog shastra to me it is moksha shastra moksha shastra means mukti liberation shastra freedom it gives me a freedom like it gave gave a freedom to arjuna from doubts to decisions from fear to courage and we can just name it more and more and more when we go through each chapter but again i would answer that summarize that question to that question to that answer that the answer of that question is is do i have to be hindu to study and practice bhagavad gita and i say in whole bhagavad gita there is no name for hindu it is just is for humanity to solve our problems happens to be where the war took place it was in india so people think it is a indian scripture but it is for the whole universe that's why you might know or you might not know that gita has been translated into every language or most of the language throughout the world and people are studying all over the world because it is the universal wisdom that priceless ancient wisdom for all of us doesn't matter wherever we live what families we live what religion we have which countries we live which region we belong which religion we belong which you name it or which titles or which responsibilities we have gita offers all so thank you very much for joining and we would like to sit down for a few minutes close our eyes and do a small meditation to reflect upon what gita offers us but if you are driving then please do not close your eyes just listen to it and if you are not driving then just sit down comfortably close your eyes very gently take a deep breath all the way down to stomach hold it for a few seconds and exhale and with every inhalation a smile and now with every inhalation just focus your breath and now breathe normally but continue to focus on your breath and with each breath with each inhalation travel with the breath and with each exhalation say relax 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 and make sure your spine your neck are all straight and aligned just be aware of your body and feel that how your hips your thighs your feet are touching that your sitting area
of Kasanjur breath. And at each inhalation, smile and feel that your body is feeling more and more relaxed. Your entire body from your lungs, chest area to the lower part of your body, all the way to your toes and the upper part of the body, all the way to your head and shoulders and back. is relaxed and every breath is smiling and filling the every cell of the lungs and traveling and filling the heart and with the blood stream the smile, the happiness is filling the every cell of the body every DNA genes nucleotides empty spaces, the mitochondria in the cell, every atom, electrons, protons in the body are enriched with a smile. They are all dancing with a smile. They are all smiling. And now, ask the question, Who am I? And the answer you will get, I'm divine soul. I am pure energy. I am Atma. The part of Paramatma. The part of supreme power. The supreme energy. the macrocosm of the part of the whole universe. So I am a microcosm of the macrocosm, the universe. I am made with five tattvas. Earth, water, fire, ether, space, same as the universe. I have the same energy as the Supreme Consciousness. All the negativity is dissolving within me 
to experience more and more and more the supreme power, the supreme energy. The energy is flowing in my body freely now. All the negativity is dissolved. I feel the energy around me, in my body, from the top, from my head, flowing freely in my body, all the way to my toes. And I feel that golden light around me, from my forehead, from my head, from around me, has covered me. And now it is expanding all the way to the walls of the room I am sitting, all the way to my house. Feel that energy is expanding further and further out and expanding. To the entire city, the entire country, the entire universe. Feel that universe and I am one. I am divine soul. I am Satchit Ananda. I am love, I am peace, I am Ananda. Continue to feel that. Om Shanti 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 Peace for my body, peace for my mind and peace for universe. And now rub your hands and put it on your head and just massage your face, your body. And thank you very much for being a part of this divine energy cultivation and sending to the universe. So this universe becomes the peaceful place because whatever we emit from our body, it goes to our surroundings and it makes our surrounding the way we feel. Like whatever we breathe in, breathe out, and whatever we breathe out, our thoughts, through our uh, mind, through our eyes, whatever energy we project or we send to the universe, the universe becomes like us. So we have to think peacefully, happy, anandam. So that our environment becomes the anandam. So that I always give three tips. To practice and those three tips are again before going to bed ask a question to yourself who am I let that answer come from you and then also repeat I am Satchit Ananda I am that divine energy I am that courage who practices the goodness and righteousness so I follow my dharma and I try to make every activity, every karma into dharma. Means whatever I do, I put love, compassion and righteousness in it. In it. Because whole Bhagavad Gita teaches us how to change karma into dharma. And how to do it? Just put love, compassion. 
And if we have a question, we don't know what to do, what not to do, then of course, we have a Bhagavad Gita here. And actually it is available on Amazon. It is a bestseller. And if you have a Bhagavad Gita at home and you feel comfortable reading that, that is perfectly fine also. So please stay in tune. We will be posting these videos on YouTube. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel Satya Kalra and uh, all the updated videos you will get the notification for it. And this afternoon we will be uploading it all this same video over there as well. And also share these messages with your friends, with your loved ones, with your family members. So on Facebook or other social media, you can share it. And also on YouTube, you can watch, you can share with others, you can subscribe our channel. And whatever we can collectively do, look like to do it. So if you have any question, please send us the questions. And also you can log on to our website. And our website is Satya, uh, my name is Satya Kalra, as I said, and our website is ptaus.org, which is abbreviation of Path to Ananda. So thank you very much. And please look for our next time live video. And uh, thank you again for coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti.